It's time to put on our thinking caps and interpret the significance of what we've been exploring. Unless it explains, history is trivial. Did you find much this week that needs to be explained? As you explored Mesopotamian astronomy, you encountered different, sometimes contradictory, explanations. Interpretations of Mesopotamian science have varied over time and continue to be disputed. How can we take steps to ensure that our interpretations are warranted and not merely subjective speculations? How might we minimize our inherent human tendencies toward presentism and rational reconstruction? One of the fundamental issues underlying different interpretations of Mesopotamian science is this. Was Mesopotamian astronomy scientific or was science invented by the Greeks? To decide this question, we need to consider several related issues, including what is nature? How is nature known? What it comes down to is how do you define science? How broad or restrictive in scope is your definition? Does your definition of science include technology and practical know-how? Does science include empirical investigations which produce quantitative and testable empirical predictions even when they were motivated by religious impulses or associated with mythology? Do you see how your answers to these questions affect your interpretation of the origin of science? Imagine that you are conversing with a friend about what you've been learning this week. Your friend, who is equally knowledgeable as you, knowing no more and no less, says something like this. The duties of Mesopotamian scribes included gathering omens from stars and livers, exercising demons, and healing diseases. The scribes of ancient Mesopotamia developed the art of reading omens in, say, sheep entrails. This does not make them biologists. Eventually, they also devoted themselves to reading omens in the celestial motions. This does not make them astronomers. They were merely practicing a celestial art, a type of priestcraft, a type of technology or magic, analogous to and no more scientific than reading liver entrails. Such astrology is far removed from scientific astronomy, the latter we owe entirely to the Greeks. Now, if a friend or fellow classmate said this, how would you respond? Why? In contrast to our hypothetical friend, historian of science Osgar Abo asserts that science exists wherever one finds empirically testable mathematical predictions. Mesopotamian astronomy, he wrote, became the model for the new exact sciences which learned from it their principal goal to give a mathematical description of a particular class of natural phenomena capable of yielding numerical predictions that can be tested against observations. It is in this sense that I claim that Babylonian mathematical astronomy was the origin of all subsequent serious endeavor in the exact sciences." End quote. So how do different definitions of science affect interpretations of when and where science began? On the one hand, our friend rules out Mesopotamian astronomy as not meeting his definition of science. On the other, Abo asserts that Mesopotamian astronomy was the origin of subsequent quantitative traditions in the history of science. Who is right? Given what you've learned about Mesopotamian astronomy, consider this statement by Anton Panikok, a historian of science. Panikok wrote, when the modern astronomer looks back at his predecessors, he finds Babylonian priests and magicians, Greek philosophers, Mohammedan princes, medieval monks, Renaissance nobles and clerics, until in scholars of the 17th century he meets with modern citizens of his own kind. 
To all of these, astronomy was not a limited branch of specialist science, but a world system interwoven with the whole of their concept of life. Not the traditional tasks of a professional guild, but the deepest problems of humanity inspired their work." End quote. Do you agree with Panacock's description of science as inspired by the deepest problems of humanity? What is the most significant implication of all you have learned this week.